I would really like to welcome back uh, our panelists. Um, so the topic of uh, today's panel is uh, status potential and challenges for innovative module applications. Um, I would request uh, uh, Anna, Ignacio, and Hamid, uh, please uh, come online. Uh, I don't know when you can see. Okay, so we are here. Okay, so. You know, uh, reflecting a little bit uh, what we have uh, uh, learned today, uh, just to start with, uh, I think, Anna, you gave a very, really interesting presentation where we can see solar is uh, really, really uh, everywhere. Then we have a presentation from Longi where, uh, you know, their latest uh, solutions from uh, re regarding the bifacial PV. Then we have uh, Trina. Uh, combining the modules uh, for the utility scale applications with trackers. Uh, that was also interesting to gain the energy yield. Then we have JS Solar presentation uh, where, uh, you know, Ignacio, you kind of emphasize different BOMs for different applications, something like floating and, and AgriPV. I think this is also very interesting for me to know that, okay, AgriPV uh, modules need to be, uh, uh, you know, ammonia tested. Uh, I think that's interesting. And uh, uh, Hamid gave a very interesting presentation for the for the rooftops, shade resistant applications. Then we have uh, DH Solar, who spoke about uh, uh, the balcony solar. And then just now we had uh, Julia speaking about uh, sun growth floating solutions and and what are the intricacies of floating system so not everyone has really talked about these uh, uh, you know innovative module applications uh, but what i can really see i think i also mentioned in the beginning of the conference that uh, okay it's, it's the number of applications are increasing beyond the, the traditional rooftop. Of course, it's, it's also getting into bifurcated, even uh, just like uh, Hamid mentioned, okay, you have a, a rooftop, but then there is a subsection called balcony. So in, 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 in summary, I think uh, the uh, applications for PV are really increasing. And what I also saw and, and, and also seeing is, uh, uh, even big companies like like Longi and JS Solar are also uh, 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 making products and making all the uh, tweaks that are required to make these solar modules to be suitable for these uh, uh, latest uh, uh, applications. So I think covering whatever is available may not be too easy. So, but uh, so. I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, you know, the major emphasis would be where, why, and, and when. So I just want to ask you, where are we in terms of these innovative applications? You know, of your choice, you can list three or four or one. It's, it's really up to you. And, uh, you know, when we will reach the complete potential and, and why, what is the key motivation factor? So I think there's a question to all. Um, just, uh, you know, list out uh, what are the, uh, you know, where are we with uh, each of these innovative applications, be it FPV, BIPV, Agri, Balcony, whatever. So on a scale of one to 10, um, Anna, because you started with a very wide range of topics, so maybe it's interesting uh, you can start. So where are we in terms of uh, one to 10 on a scale? Oh, I think this really depends which country you're looking at, right? Because in uh, Germany, of course, our main installations are still on residential uh, roof, uh, utility scale rooftops and utility scale power plants and floating and agrivortex is just starting. But if you look worldwide, we see a really, I see a really high potential for these two technologies, especially the synergies for floating PV with hydro dams, for example, as was shown also in the last presentation, and the reduction of water evaporation will have a, a, a dual gain, right? And uh, we also did some simulations where we show that the uh, 
the the gain from the PV floating PV on the hydrogen uh, and the reduction of evaporation is much higher than if we would use the same amount of water for hydropower. And and uh, you know what about so just to understand on a global scale also. So where are we in terms of FPV, BIPV, AgriPV? Let's say these three on a scale of one to ten. Oh, on a scale of one to ten. So I would say uh, for AgriPV we are we are still at the four or five. We have still a lot to do to develop to understand. Uh, mm -hmm. I think on the floating we are already on the six. Uh, or seven and then the BIPV, I think we are quite advanced. Yeah, seven or eight, I would say. Oh, already? Okay, great. And how many, but I mean, there's a lot to do with regard to standards, but for technology, uh, okay. I think we, we know a lot already. Yeah, that's my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, so. So Hamid, because uh, you, you you just presented the shade resistant module, but I also know that you were really doing a lot of uh, other products like balcony, agri PV. So so what's what's your favorite and and where do you rate it? Okay, yeah, and um, so I would like to uh, exclude BIPV um, in compared to the other applications that you said because. Um, if you look at uh, FPV um, and uh, AgriPV, they are basically a standard modules with some modifications, but it doesn't require a very different material or a different uh, way of production or technology. Uh, pricing is different. And um, so I will not put BIPV here, but BAPV, building attached, is something which can be categorized and compared. I would say that uh, with BIPV, which is a different category, of course, there are a lot of advancements uh, with coloring uh, and uh, also, of course, the standards, BOM, et cetera. Um, I'm not as optimistic as Anna, but uh, I would say that there are a lot to do here. I will categorize BIPV somewhere like five because um, of the challenges of it. However, um, for um, FPV and AgriPV, I see a very, very big potential for uh, AgriPV because uh, it is less complex compared to the other ones, and uh, it doesn't have that much of requirements. I, I mean, it's in the beginning. There are like different ways, but I'm expecting to see a very, very faster uh, advancement in this area compared to the other ones, uh, especially FPV. And uh, just one thing that uh, regarding to the um, other subcategories, as you mentioned, like balconies or building attached, which I mentioned, uh, I would say here we're going to see a lot. And these are not, uh, the technology here is quite mature. So I would say that we are at nine uh, in this category um, and it can be implemented very fast. And this is also something with shade resistant module we want to promote. Ignacio, your thoughts, because you, you already presented the, uh, the, the FPV and, and AgriPV products. So, so what's your take about these, these new streams? Yeah, well, I, I think I agree with, with Anna in terms of um, we are in, in, in a stage. I would, I would say that the technology is there. You know, The technology is well known by us. So we, we just need to, to play with the technology and adapt this technology to the different uses, right? So it is somehow giving us at least the five, right? So from, from those points, um, there is a lot of gap to, to improve the, the products. I agree also with Hamed that the BIPV, it requires a different approach and more, more suitable product for this kind of, of uses. But well, um, if something have demonstrated this industry, it's that we can grow really fast, right? So in, if we have really the incentives now, and the incentives could come from different uses, from different um, like demand, right? From from different uh, applications, I think we can really move fast because the core point, which is the technology, we already have it. The other part mm -hmm. is like to play with materials and play with different configurations on, on these materials to adapt this technology to different environments and requirements. So I think 
the floating it's more known it, it's it's well known and we are probably because we are using a more standard or traditional uh, products for the agri pv it's uh, the same but uh, we will see in the short term really specialized products on that using the base of this technology but uh, with uh, much more adaptability and i think that the different players have a uh, or will have more or less interest depending on the demands and the opportunities of different markets. But definitely, I would say that we are all committed with this uh, carbon neutrality, and this is like the trigger, the motivation of all of us, no? And it is like uh, what what will bring this kind of really suitable products for this application. I would say in the short term, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, so on the scale of uh, one to ten, where one is nothing, ten is. Full potential. Where do you see the floating and and agri? Because uh, you presented yeah. these products. For the floating, uh, knowing that there is like uh, something like more than twenty gigawatts installed in the worldwide. Okay, I would say that seven uh, could be a suitable number. Agri PV it has much more gap. Also because the installations, the size of the installations, so far they are uh, smaller. So far, okay. Let we will see it. But yes, a uh, 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 five or six for agri PV, seven for floating, and the IPV definitely, because of the widest uh, range of applications, uh, could be uh, near to this five or even below. And yeah. okay, so uh, you know all these technologies are actually not uh, really new. So uh, when I when I started uh, working on our uh, survey on, on floating, so I learned, so I think back in 2007 or something, there was a floating system installed in Japan. So, but all these technologies are really getting into the limelight very recently. So what is the key motivation or a triggering point that PV is searching these new avenues. Anyway. Well, I mentioned, I, I, I believe that it's the, the, the challenge for all of us is to reach this carbon neutrality. So the key, the key motivation is to, to bring this technology to, to all the fields where it is applicable. For me, uh, for example, it's a good example, uh, the floating PV systems to, to these synergies that I mentioned also in, my, in and, and, and Anna mentioned, uh, the synergies with the hydro. This is a motivation, it's a clear motivation. It's to, to complete the puzzle, right? To, to bring all the pieces on the technology that we have nowadays to make a whole system full efficient, no? So uh, for me, this is the, the motivation to, to create the whole picture and squeeze all the energy, the potential energy that we can find uh, over a lake, for example. Okay. I think also uh, that you know, for example, uh, I just want to mention one one example. Like for example, I think four or five years back, I saw the VIPV nice uh, car uh, glass uh, for, uh, developed by Frano Frise. You know, I also had a selfie there. But um, you know, now I think these it's five or six years. I mean, it was all, all only was a display piece, but now people are thinking and very serious even about VIPV. So some insights from your end? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, in the future, we, uh, as we see already, uh, we will have an increase in electrical vehicles, right? And an increase in, in battery demand. And, and also this is, I think this is like sector coupling, right? This will be very important in the future if we, with the solar, we, c we have on the one hand a nice, Status symbol. So if you think about the, the, that's what the automotive people say. Okay, now we look for a most, you know, fast car, fast starting car. But what will how this how will this look in the future? And and the solar integration. I think this is a really nice feature, and it's also a valuable feature because we in, can increase the the hours we can go, like for for three thousand hours in a year, depending where we go, like. Right for the car, so we have to have. Yeah, this has an impact on the on the electrical grid, and so this is a very interesting. I think I think there are these two aspects, and they will promote this technology. But as you also know, automotive industry is fast, but maybe not as fast as solar industry because they have a lot <laughs> of. <yeah. laughs> 
Maybe I can also add something to this. Yes. Um, I would say that the key motivation here is price. So considering that in the past 20 years, the price of the modules are dropped 98%. And at the moment, solar is the cheapest energy in the world. We can expect that more niche products. Previously, mm -hmm. that would make no sense that you pay a lot of money to buy modules to produce electricity, which is cheaper. But at the moment, electricity prices ramp, uh, rocketed up, especially in Europe after the war. And uh, the price of the modules, on the other hand, decreased. And uh, the price of land increased. We see that the land get more and more expensive, but the modules become more and more cheaper. So I would say that the biggest drive here is uh, the prices, because you can pay to get the modules very easily compared to 23 years ago. And uh, no, you can uh, pay the electricity, which is way more expensive than your modules easily with solar energy. And also there is uh, no land restriction here. So with solar, you are very flexible. You can put it everywhere. And that brings more flexibility and it's a very good motivation. Very valid point. So, you know, I think this is all really looking nice. Like uh, we, we are all talking about uh, how we are going to have uh, these technologies are taking up, but there are always challenges. And yes, these technologies were there in the past, but now these technologies are also getting into limelight. So this also means they're also bringing up new challenges uh, in terms of supply chain, value chain, uh, BOM and, and transportation, what, what So, but, you know, I just would like to know, uh, you know, what are the key challenges for each of these, uh, these uh, interesting applications of, uh, of PV, FPV, BIPV, Agri and BIPV maybe. So uh, what, 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 what are the top challenges that, you know, this has to be solved, then we are really almost there. So maybe I can I can start if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, please, please. Go ahead. Anna, yeah. I mean, I'm not the producer, I'm a researcher, but from my point of view, for um, agri photovoltaics, we, we have a lot of diversity, and um, the agricultural crops, they need a specific amount of light. So one of the challenges is that we don't uh, create systems where there's no crops anymore in the end. So we we have to take care of the light availability and take this into account. This is one of the challenges and still be cost efficient. And mm -hmm. also uh, so that we can still have the diversity of systems in the end needed for agricultural applications from my point of view. And then of course the legislation, as I mentioned. Um, the For the floating PV, it was also mentioned, I agree that the anchoring and mooring system and the mechanical um, uh, loads are, are still a challenge so that we have a um, that we can increase the lifetime or have a long lifetime of the modules also because we have a lot water is always moving all the electrical cables are moving and the modules are moving so this is a challenge uh, which is still to be tackled and then I think for the BIPV, it was also mentioned that if we look at the special application with the coloring, um, we need the flexible production also have yeah, for small batches, which are cater to specific architecture and design. So this is very specialized application. So this will be a challenge which can be dealt with by yeah, digital production also. I envision that you can uh, you you can in the internet configure your module based on the building you want to to design and the right coloring in the future. Wow, that's great, uh, Ignacio. Yeah, I can add something. Yeah, yeah please, Ignacio. Yeah, yeah. but um, I I would say that as Ignacio mentioned, uh, reliability is a big challenge. I would say for all these applications, I also agree with him. Reliability is the main challenge here. And um, in respect to each uh, different category of Agri-PV, FPV, and BIPV, I would say that for Agri-PV is in the beginning, the acceptance 
but uh, of course policy here are pretty much supporting. And um, then it comes the matter of uh, maintenance and cleaning as well, um, because there are like two ways, the elevated one and the vertical one. So each of them has some advantages. One of them, cleaning is the issue. The other is the corpse type uh, is the issue. But uh, of course, the climate is also very important, whether you want to use it in, a, uh, in, for example, Europe as a moderate place, or you want to use it, for example, in Middle East or places which have drier uh, systems and um, ecosystems and different uh, requirements. But for FPV, um, mainly is reliability, I would say, uh, because uh, they are at the moment on the, uh, on the lakes mainly, but we see that uh, they are also emerging on the seas. So we have uh, quite different requirements in respect to the minerals in the water. So uh, corrosion and uh, degradations is quite intensive here. But uh, also you need to consider, for example, as Anna mentioned, uh, it's always moving. Uh, but even if it, go, uh, if it goes to the sea, then you have the impact from the waves and et cetera. Yeah. And also the bird drops is also a big issue here, which, which needs to be addressed. The so maintenance and cleaning is also a very, very big challenge there. Um, and finally, for BIPV, I would say that the biggest challenge is the architects. So um, having a compromise between the design and power is something which needs to be considered. But the pricing system is also something um, because you have a lower efficiencies. It makes no sense for module manufacturers to offer it mainly as uh, euro per watt peak. They go for euro per square meter in some cases. And um, this makes the modules more expensive. But uh, anyhow, it's accepted no quite well in the uh, in the uh, architectures uh, field i would say but standards here is also a challenge i think anna or ignazio mentioned it so uh, standards here is also a big challenge because requirement for buildings is different from requirement for modules so you have to use a different bill of materials you have to use uh, different processes and uh, of course you have challenges with your energy generation Ignacio? Yeah, I fully agree with uh, with Anna and with, with Ahmed. I would like to add on the agri PV, uh, it's also mentioned, no, the regulation. The regulation for me, it's something uh, really uh, important because uh, in the traditional use of the, PV, of, of, the, um, of the PV plants, we were using lands with, which were what's not in use, right? Not, not important lands, let's say, no? For the agri-PV, we are talking about crucial lands, no? The use of those, uh, of those places, it's like crucial. Um, so definitely there should be something really well done, uh, as much standard as it could be worldwide, it would be better, right? I would understand that ecologically speaking, there should be similar, right? Uh, the needs for on, on, on this use, no? For, for me, the regulation would be essential. The other points have already been mentioned. I will try to add another view and it's uh, look, looking at into the, the products. Another challenge is um, how to manufacture products, right? Which are uh, aimed for this kind of uses in a mass production, in a masses, massive scale, right? Uh, to make them, them uh, competitive, right? Uh, we were talking also about the prices, which is the main driver, I, I also agree. So the point is that we need to really create, it has happened in the industry, you know, when, when a new technology is coming in the beginning, there is always a motivation and a challenge, no? Because you don't have enough market share to produce in a competitive way or in, a, in, a, in an amount uh, which is making the trigger in terms of your investment needed to be competitive with the product. So the mass production, it's also a challenge that I think we can jump over over that with, uh, with incentives like the demand of the markets, but it's a challenge to take into account. So. Okay. So uh, I think I have one final question for uh, each of you. Anna, you know, you were overseeing the research activities at uh, EASE, not just this new applications, but also the, the entire uh, PV spectrum. So do you see any other interesting PV application that is cooking in the lab and that might become real big in near future?
so this is a bit of a surprise question, but I can think aloud. <laughs> but the answer, of yeah, course, yeah, there are new things. <clears throat> I think already there are um, trackers, nothing so new. We saw that already. It's it's everywhere new except in Germany, maybe. Um, so there it's new <laughs> coming up. Uh, internationally, I, I think uh, we will see still a shift for bigger utility scale modules and also maybe medium voltage inverters. So in overall, so we did some research on this, my colleagues from the inverter department. So this might be a change if we if we switch to medium voltage inverters. So this would significantly change the way we build PV systems and also the, the size of modules and how they would interact. This is something new, for example. And then we also, as I showed more for with regard to the integrated PV, I think this new top upcoming topics we are researching is this um, Bockland or Moor PV, where we do carbon capture by re-wetting the land and adding PV for uh, for economic reasons also. So this will be the new uh, big thing for carbon capture. Ah. That's interesting. And so then I, I have a question for you, Hamid and, and Ignacia. You know, whenever we have these new applications, uh, it really requires a lot of adaptation at the module level. So as a module makers, do you think this is an opportunity or rather a challenge? Because, you know, initially the, the volumes are not so great. So, you know, end of the day, it's yeah. it's the business and uh, how much money you bring into the companies matters. And then uh, this may not be always the case because you have so many new technologies, so many things. So whenever you see new application, yeah. you think this is a challenge or rather an opportunity? Yeah, I think I think I anticipate um, this answer, right? It's it's always cross-linked somehow, uh, you know? Okay. Uh, firstly, it's coming the or any talent is bringing an opportunity, right? <laughs> and, and, and vice versa, no? No, but definitely it's something that we, it's happened in the past, right? With uh, all the new technologies, right? When you need to invest in a new technology, you need to have clear that you will uh, obtain the return of this investment, right? So definitely this kind of uses in this, in, in SFPV, AgriPV and BIPV, it will happen, okay? Because the, the market is there, right? The opportunity, it's already there. So it's a matter of uh, being able to anticipate the investment needed to make the, the, the product uh, competitive enough to, to face this uh, new market. But yeah, in my view, it's both together. And it's the commitment. We have been done this uh, with this new technology. Uh, PV industry is so young, no? In, 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 yeah. in the world history, right? So it was a challenge and the opportunity was there and, and the success is already here. So this is again, a repeating models that we have indeed in my view. Amir? Yeah, I totally agree with Ignacio. So um, uh, when there is an opportunity, there is definitely a challenge and in every challenge there is opportunity. So I, I totally agree with him. And um, so for us, uh, you know, considering the size of our company, we are a very customer oriented uh, uh, company. So we are looking what customer really needs. We look into applications and we try to answer that. So that was the um, point that we came up with the hotspot free module because shading was a problem. So we start to answer it. And uh, I would say that this experience uh, was quite interesting experience. It was, uh, of course, a lot of challenges, a lot of learnings, and uh, but it brought a lot of opportunities as well. And um, I would say that here, the biggest opportunity for or the biggest challenge for us was, of course, the R&D and uh, making the module better or even making the next generations of it. But of course, uh, ramping up, um, checking the defects, showing the challenges, uh, quality of having new products uh, in the modules or new components. Uh, all of them were a lot of challenges that we had to overcome, also the fabrication. But uh, I would say, although the production capacity is um, significantly lower compared to the standard product, uh, but it's 
bring us the innovation. It addresses some uh, requirements and need in the market. And of course, uh, it shows the advancement and the uh, um, efforts that the company puts uh, to develop new technology and add something to the society. Right. I think that's a very nice uh, concluding remark that it's uh, the, the innovation is driven by the need and uh, yeah, it's customer driven. So thank you very much for giving your wonderful views on this uh, on this topic. And, uh, you know, we are very glad to have you. So I will now uh, close the conference with a few closing remarks. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And uh, can you please uh, show the slides? Min, oh, there. Okay, so here we come to the uh, final uh, conclusion of our conference. So we, uh, I would uh, once again like to thank our sponsors, and then uh, we have we have been updating our website with new reports. Uh, recently, we launched a report on uh, uh, new products that were launched in. Uh, H1, so it's not listed here, but please uh, uh, go to our website report section and you can download the latest report. So it's really uh, a catalog of products uh, uh, close to 100, which were really displayed at uh, most of the recent uh, leading conferences and exhibitions. Next slide. Next slide. So again, uh, we are we will again host a, uh, our next conference, which is a reliable PV module design, which is also we held it last year. So we are just uh, doing the the this year's version, and it will be held on October twenty sixth. Uh, again, at the same time, nine thirty to uh, thirteen thirty uh, European time. So. See you all there. But uh, before I close, I just want to also inform that Fang News team, uh, next slide, is uh, visiting REI. So if you want to make any, any exchange of ideas or if you want, if you are looking for collaborations, so please feel free to contact us early and we can fix an appointment. Uh, but we will be uh, going from stand to stand. In, in most of the halls, so probably we can also meet in IELTS also. So thank you very much and uh, have a good evening.